look at this. This is an op-ed, Washington Post, and it says, The Myth of MAGA Isolationism. Mark Thiessen wrote that, and Mark Thiessen joins me now. Mark, you argue that conventional wisdom is that Trump voters are isolationist, isolationist, and you say that's dead wrong. Make a case. That that is dead wrong. Well, first of all, Donald Trump is an isolationist. Donald Trump whacked Qasem Soleimani, bombed Syria twice, destroyed the ISIS caliphate, launched a cyber attack on Russia, killed hundreds of Russian Wagner mercenaries, and threatened North Korea with fire and fury the likes of which the world has never seen if they didn't stop threatening us. So he, there, the leader of the MAGA movement is an isolationist. But the Reagan Institute just did a poll, uh, which was the most in-depth study of MAGA views on foreign policy. And what they found is on every issue, from support for Israel, to support for Ukraine, to support for uh, Taiwan, uh, to, uh, to concern about democracy and human rights, uh, to concern about China, to wanting bold Lewis leadership, MAGA Republicans were more intervention, uh, were more internationalist, more hawkish, less isolationist than establishment Republicans. The establishment Republicans had lower numbers on all of those things. So this whole thing has been flipped on, uh, is, is flipped around. We don't have a divide in the Republican Party between a establishment, internationalist establishment, globalist establishment, and an isolationist MAGA movement. The MAGA movement actually wants bold, strong leadership on the world stage. And the MAGA movement has been successful in foreign policy if you go back and look at what Trump did yes. in his four years. A del an extraordinary contrast with what's happened in the Biden administration's foreign policy over the last three and a half years. Yes. I mean, it's like day and night or chalk and cheese, as we used to say in England. Anyway, let me, let me move on, Mark. Um, we've got uh, the White House okay. defending, sorry, I've got to move on, uh, defending Biden's record <laughs> on inflation. They say it will not hurt his performance tomorrow night. Roll it. When there is an opportunity for this president to speak to millions of Americans, he shows up and he meets the moment. So yes, you know, eggs and milk and there were grocery things that were up. It has gone down. It has gone down since 2022. Gas prices, because of the actions that this president took, and let's not forget there was an in invasion. The president has met the moment with every issue that we have had in front of us. The president obviously talks about that often. He's going to have another opportunity in, on Thursday to speak to those issues. Well, Mark, that's a rather desperate uh, defense uh, of uh, President <laughs> Biden on inflation. I think, I, I, I think it's going to hurt him in the debate. What say you? Well, first of all, what she said was a lie. Uh, a $100 grab basket of groceries now costs $125. Uh, inflation is cumulative. It's growing slower than it was when he unleashed, you know, record inflation, the highest inflation in 40 years, but it's not down. Uh, so, and Americans are not stupid. They understand this because they see it every time they go to their grocery carts. But if you want to understand the trouble they're in with just one statistic, uh, when, today, the, when Joe Biden became president, Americans had the highest level of personal savings in history, and they now have the highest level of personal debt. They've gone from having trillions, uh, trillions of dollars in, 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 in savings because of, co because of the COVID pandemic. Th then all of a sudden, Biden unleashed this inflation. They spent down their savings. And now we have credit card debt that's racked up to over a trillion dollars for the first time, $17.4 tr uh, trillion dollars in personal debt. And they're paying record interest on that because we had to raise interest rates in order to fight the inflation. So they can't pay. They've maxed out their credit cards. They can't get out from under their credit card debt. They can't afford to buy a house. They can't afford their grocery. Uh, they, can, they can't afford anything. And so the idea that they're just going to message their way out of this, uh, people know what their savings accounts look like. People know what their credit card balance looks like. Uh, they're not going to ignore that. You know, Mark, you made your case very well right there. But I've got one last one for you. 30 <laughs> seconds. Will okay. tomorrow, the CNN presidential debate, will it decide the election? It could very well decide the election because I think the first debate in 2020 decided the election. I think uh, people people voted for Joe Biden because Trump, they thought they were just tired of the chaos. And Trump came in too hot in that debate. Yeah. Um, and he turned a lot of people off. I think if he comes into this debate strong but presidential, makes a strong case for his record versus Joe Biden's record, doesn't get dragged into talking about January 6th in the 2020 election like they want to distract people from, uh, he, can, he can win the election uh, tomorrow night. Or if Joe Biden isn't sufficiently jacked up, you never know. Mark Thiessen, great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get some of that Adderall to prepare for my <laughs> grilling by you. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Mark, you're all right. We'll see you again real soon. Mr. Thiessen.